Hello, hello, and welcome once again to a Beatles program that we call Things We Said Today. This is a Beatles news-themed show. That's what we talk about here on the program, what's going on in the world of the Beatles on a day-by-day basis or weekly basis. And I'm Ken Michaels, one of the co-hosts of the show, known for my syndicated Beatles program called Every Little Thing, being joined by the man who's literally on the pulse of everything going on in the world of the Beatles. Oh my. Second by second, as we speak. Oh my. He may have just gotten a major text just now as we're, that's, as that's we're doing true. this show. That's true. But no, not, not yet. Not, not yet, anyway. Hi, Ken. Steve. Hi, Steve. Steve Marinucci of Beatles Examiner. And um, we are going to do a show right now on the concert film called Rock Show. This is one of a series of shows that we're doing on Paul McCartney because uh, there's just a flood of activity going on with Paul concerning the Wings Over America remaster, and we're going to do a show on that, the box set that has just come out. Also, we're doing one right now on Rock Show. And um, and what else? <laughs> well, I, at some point, we're both going to see the tour. That's true. Yes, there is a tour going on. There is a tour going on. There's so much going on, you could be blinded by that. I anyway. know, and and you know, and uh, it started out, uh, you know, with a lot of uh, uh, different songs, and it's kind of settled into a uh, where he's alternating two songs a night now, which will be interesting to see where that goes. But um, things are moving along for uh, Sir Paul, as they say. Yes, I noticed how you did an article on how he suddenly added things we said today mm-hmm. into a set list <laughs> he must be and, he must be listening to our show that's what it is he's cashing in on our on our uh success with this program there we go <laughs> he's catching the wave that's that he is that he is <laughs> he knows all about this show oh he probably yeah. does <laughs> i doubt it but anyway so rock show we both got to see this film on the big screen me in Connecticut, you in California, mm-hmm. and so what we would, what I thought we'd do is just uh, talk about this concert film and how we think about it all these years later. Didn't actually turn up in movie theaters until 1980, believe it or not, four years after the tour. <laughs> right, which is stunning when you think about it. I mean, there there'd be so much less interest at that point. I mean, it's still Paul McCartney, but still four years after you should kind of um, draw on the momentum or try to do something within a year, say, of when the tour ended. But it was 1980 when it was shown in theaters. So, um, Steve, what were your thoughts as you were watching this? And by the way, did you see this film when it first was shown in theaters? You know, I can't remember if I did or not. It's been, I mean, it's been so darn long. Um, I'm sure I've seen clips of it over the years. I can't remember if if I saw it in theaters. I know I've had a... I've had a VHS copy for years. And uh-huh. years. I mean, who doesn't? But right. um, I don't. I, I don't remember if I saw it when it first came out. Um, you know, and it was that was one of the reasons to go see it was because I hadn't seen it in so long. And I was remarkably, I was quite impressed. I mean, you know, I had watched the um, the Wings documentary that comes in the deluxe set that you can also get in the. Um, the, the the deluxe the, edition, the yeah, box. The deluxe set. edition, you can yeah. only get it there. And, and you're talking about wings. O- you're talking about wings over the world, right? And I, you know, I, I like that. But after you know, watching a, a, some of that and all the interruptions with all the press conferences and everything, you kind of go. Especially now, I think you want to see the whole show, and I think Rock Show is better for that now. You know that you can that it's just the whole show and nothing but. There's, right. You know, there's no, there's no interruptions. The music is great, and and even somebody, I mean, even people who, you know, kind of um, hesitate about Paul, you know, have to really like what you see there because it's just there. The band is just so good. There's so many, and we'll talk more about this, obviously, but you know, the band is just really puts on a great performance. Yeah. A really good performance. Um, what did you think? Oh God, I got so many things to say about it, but um, I think it really showcases Wings as as a band, mm-hmm. as we discussed before, a great live band and very tight, you know. And I couldn't believe, you know, because this is this was really the first time in a long time since I've I've watched it. I have it on video cassette, but truthfully, I haven't watched Rock Show for quite a while. Wings Over America 
as a as, as an album and a CD. That's my favorite live album of all time, and I've probably played that more than any other live album. Mm -hmm. But as far as visually, I haven't really watched Rock Show for a long time, and I did see it in 1980 on the big screen. So, you know, there's nothing like seeing anything on the big screen, but what really struck me was um, just what a great tight unit they were, how Paul's vocals were just so amazing. I can't mm -hmm. believe how strong his vocals were, especially on the rockers, especially on songs like Soily. I mean, that's, you know, one of my favorite live performances ever from any artist. I mean, it was an amazing song to close with, and as we said before, a bit of a shocker to close with a song that he hadn't released. But songs like Letting Go, where his voice is amazing, and Ban on the Run, and especially on a song like Silly Love Songs, where, you know, you really, it, it's such, it has such a different feel as a live song compared to uh, a studio recording. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that that's really a, struck a, that's me... That's a really good point, because, yeah, you know, I noticed that too when I was sitting there watching it, that especially Silly Love Songs, which you kind of tend to toss off when you hear the studio version. I and, don't. <laughs> well, I mean, there's, there's a lot I, I of great things. Be, I, I think yeah. some people do, right? yeah. but, you know, and it, it did sound a lot better, and a lot of those songs sounded a lot better live, you know. For whatever the reason, you know, there are certain songs that you may love that may not translate well live, you know, and I don't know what the reason is behind that. Mm -hmm. Like, for, for some reason, and I think you disagreed with me in a previous show about this, I love Calico Skies. I think that is a great song, one of my favorite acoustic McCartney songs you're, from Flaming Pie. You're correct. I, I, did, I did disagree with you on that one. I just didn't think that it worked as well as a live song with that mm -hmm. Cajun feel, you know, with the accordion in there that uh, Wicks was playing. But for some reason, the material that Wings was doing back then, especially the Venus and Mars material, and uh, Speed of Sound and Band on the Run, they work really well as live songs mm -hmm. to the point where certain songs I like so much more as live recordings. Letting Go is, is the perfect example of that. I love Letting Go as a studio recording, but I love it so much more as a live recording. And when you get used to hearing the live versions of these songs, you may actually tend to like them even more so than the studio recordings. And as someone who has always loved the studio side of Paul, where he's such a perfectionist, especially with his vocals and his arrangements. Right. When you hear it live, I don't know what it is. I mean, these songs just happen to translate very well live. And one of the things that, and it's really funny, uh, I've listened to Wings Over America, like I said, more than any live album. Mm -hmm. And after all these years, it finally struck me, <laughs> like, like a hammer on the head here, he did almost every song from Venus and Mars. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I didn't realize that until I watched Rock Show, with the exception of um, Love and Song, and um, Treat Her Gently, Lonely Old People, and the instrumental of, of Crossroads theme. I think every song from Venus and Mars was done. Well, even even more so. I mean, you, you know, he at that point wasn't, you know, as um, as into keeping up with his with the Beatles stuff like he is now. Right. And. Obviously, if you look at the track list on, on Rock Show and Wings Over America, you know, the number of Beatles songs were relatively few there were compared five. to now. Yeah. And, you know, that's interesting of itself that the, the Wings material was made to stand on its own, and it did. That's, you know, that's really, um, that's one of the big differences between Rock Show, in other words, that tour, and now. And... You know, and in some respects, and, and I've seen a lot of people say, you know, I wish you'd do more wing songs. And in a, in a way, I, I do too. In fact, I pulled out Wingspan the other day and I was listening to that. And, you know, that is such a great compilation, you know, and, and it's, you know, it's almost a shame that he has to kind of subvert that and go for more Beatles stuff because he thinks people want to hear that. You know, it's too bad because... Those wing songs are so good. They really are. Well, I think Paul is a crowd pleaser. Well, and, yeah. And what he, what he does is, and I remember him saying many years back, probably the 89-90 tour, mm -hmm. um, he said, if I was a fan, what would I want to see him do? So he's thinking like a fan. He's not thinking about himself and what Paul himself really wants to do. So there's so many great Beatles songs 
I mean, you can never go wrong with a Beatles song, as I've said before here well, on this you know, show. I but think, when, I, I when, don't think that was necessarily true on this tour, because I think, obviously, because he he went through the wing song, he used the wing song so much more. Oh, I, I don't think I, he, no, no way, no. I, if you go, can back, we argue about this one? <laughs> we did argue, but a few years ago, I remember talking about this. There was a show I saw in Philadelphia. I don't remember mm-hmm. the year, but he did more, I think, wings than he's doing now. Yes. He brought back Listen to What the Man Said and Hi, 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 and it's great that he's doing those songs. But he was also doing Venus and Mars Rock Show a few years ago. Right. He was doing, um, well, he started to bring back 1985. Not bring back. He was starting to do that song in a set list, period. He was doing Ram On, you know, which is not a wing song, but I'm saying more solo stuff. And um, no, I don't feel like there's so much more wings. In fact, I think there's not enough wings and there's not enough... Well, that, 80s on up, but that, uh, was, uh, that that was my point as to as to then versus now. I mean, there is more wings on the earlier tour, and you know, I kind of, I think you've said this before that you kind of wish that there were more wings now. Oh, definitely. And and and, um, but but he let the wing songs on that rock show tour stand out for what they were, and you know, and really, and the Beatle numbers played second fiddle and i think and that was a good thing i mean that it worked well remember again this was a different time the no, first i know that no, i'm i'm full you know i'm re- i'm fully aware of that you know and i th- also think it showed up in his performance because i think the he you could hear the the comfortable feeling in his voice with the solo numbers than with the beatle numbers well you know something i was thinking about those very same comments that you made a few shows back Mm -hmm. And as much as I will agree that he's very comfortable, he was very comfortable with the new material that he was doing then with Wings, I totally disagree with you that he was less spirited on the Beatles songs because you watch Rock Show and Paul at the piano doing Lady Madonna. I mean, he's pumping the piano there. He's really into it. Oh, no, that's definitely true. In fact, it's it's even more true on the Cal Palace show. Because I was listening to that yesterday, and I was, and and he's very animated on that Cal Palace show, incredibly. Right. In fact, I thought it was actually more animated there than it was on Wings Over America. And, um, but yeah, I mean, I you know, I mean, I, I'm, I just, but I just think overall, though, the his he was more in his comfort zone doing the Wings songs at that particular time. And I mean, with everything going on, you know, I, I he. You know, Beatle numbers were not his priority, I don't think, at that right. point. You so. have to remember that that first five, six years of the solo careers of the Beatles, all four of them were concerned about establishing themselves and having successful solo careers, and that was right. more important than playing Beatle numbers. Right. didn't mean they didn't love what they did in the Beatles, but they had to go and do their own material. And that's why, at that point in time, it was important to Paul to do this. And he was able to do it because, fortunately, at the time, radio played him and the other solo Beatles. Right. That's how it was. Top 40 radio played him. Album rock stations played him. And they played album cuts, too. And the songs that are in the set list from from Wings Over America and Rock Show... Those songs were played on the radio, like I said before. Time to Hide was played on rock stations. Medicine Jar was played on rock stations. Beware My Love was played on rock stations. Magneto and Titania Man was played. I remember those. I remember them like it was yesterday. Here in New York, stations like WPLJ used to play those songs on a regular basis, on a steady diet. It wasn't just the singles. So for that reason, Paul was able to play all these other songs, and he was able to showcase Denny Lane, on five songs, singing lead, and he had Jimmy McCulloch sing on Medicine Jar right. for one song. And, um, you know, it was more, you watch this now and you realize how much more of a band they were for that reason. I mean, there's all kinds of contributions that musicians can make in a band. It's not just a matter of how many lead vocals each member has. There's also uh, the songwriting. You know, Denny Lane was writing a little bit. Jimmy McCulloch was writing a little bit. Mm-hmm. He did let Joe English sing a lead vocal on Wings right. at the Speed of Sound, even though it was a Paul song anyway. You know, and Linda got to sing Cook of the House, even though that was a Paul song anyway. But there was more input from the band members. And when you watch this band, you realize what a great band they were. I hadn't seen this in quite a while. And 
Joe English was a madman <laughs> on yeah, the really drums. Was. He, re- he really was. But, you know, one thing you mentioned about Linda, she was so, you know, she was very confident, if you noticed, yeah. and very relaxed. And, uh, you know, I, I remember when I saw her in 89, I didn't catch that. It seemed like she was a little more nervous, but, uh, um, but not, certainly not, in, you know, in rock show at all. She was very, very comfortable and very relaxed, and it was and it was great that, you know, that she had such a great. I mean, her introduction to, uh, you know, um, to a live and let die on the um, Cow Palace show, was, you know, was a good uh, good uh, notice of that. There was, you know, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of good things going on there. There's no question about it. Um, it's a very strong, very strong film. What did you think of, of versus? I mean, I written up that I thought Rock Show was better than Wings Over the World. What do you think? Uh, they're two different things. And actually, when I watched Wings Over the World, I actually mm-hmm. didn't watch it till after Rock Show. Not that that even matters. Mm-hmm. But to me, I thought they were pretty similar because what struck me, and I hadn't seen Wings Over the World for a long time, the songs, most of the songs on Wings Over the World are complete. Mm-hmm. And that really surprised me. So it came across a lot like Rock Show with right. some interruptions in between. I didn't feel like this was some comprehensive documentary of the tour. It didn't come across that way to me. There were some you know, interesting bits in the middle, you know, Paul celebrating his birthday, and um, Jimmy McCulloch had a birthday there that they celebrated, right. and there's also media coverage of the tour. Yep. And, you know, Paul watching the TV and hearing, you know, what, what uh, reports were saying about the tour. That stuff was interesting, but I, I didn't you know, feel like it was, you know, over-your-head documentary kind of thing. Right, and I was, you know, I was thinking that maybe, although I think the completists would have a, another, would not like the idea, but I thought that maybe if they had clipped all those backstage, you know, of clips from that TV special and threw them in as an extra disc with Rock Show, it would have been nicer than packaging it separately and putting it in the, in the deluxe version because I think a lot of people would have liked to have seen all that stuff. And the only people that are going to see it are the people who get, you know, who get the deluxe box. And right. Not. So I think that would have been that would have been a good idea. Even if I mean they could have done it anyway. And and there are some deluxe things in the in Rock Show which we had neither of us have seen yet because we don't have the screeners, but. I think that would have been a, a really great idea to do that, and, and and apparently they have, according to what we've been hearing, they haven't done that. So yeah, well, we'll save all of our comments for the for the box set True. in our next show. True. But the other things that struck me about watching Rock Show, first of all, well, I didn't really need to watch this to know this. How much I missed having a horn section, a real horn section mm. with real players. As much as I love Wix, there's nothing like having the real instruments. And on synthesizers these days, you can duplicate just about every sound. But horn sounds still haven't been mastered to the point where it really sounds like the real thing. Mm-hmm. It still has a phony, you know, sometimes a tinny kind of sound. Right. And I hear that going back to the, the eighty nine ninety tour. Anyway, I'm really glad that he finally... I, this is one thing that, you know, people have been screaming for for a long time. And I'm glad he finally gave in to the, to the demand and finally put it out. If we can only get them to do Let It Be, darn it. <laughs> oh, well. well, you know, during this tour, the Wings Over America tour, I didn't miss Let It Be. No, I'm sure nobody, I don't think anybody did really at that point, at that stage. You know, a, as a, um, I would have been uh, 16, 17 mm-hmm. seeing this show, I was there to see Wings. I wasn't there to hear Beatles. Now, that's interesting because if it had been me, let's see, I would have been. 25 and I would have been there to see a beetle that would have been my that would have been my perspective so okay well we're very different and that's good we I are. like the contrast we are yeah okay. no I mean there's no there's no in fact I mean and it's it's funny actually that I can appreciate the band on its own in this movie rather than look at the beetle stuff actually the the beetle stuff almost is kind of a interference for me because the, the group stuff is so good and that's one of the reasons why i think you know paul's performances on the on the solo numbers are are much better than on the beetle numbers that's you know because i think he like 
Like I, I'm, as I said, I think he's more comfortable with those numbers here than the Beatle numbers. So, anyway, mm, I just think it was a different time. Oh, I you agree. You know, and he definitely. was he was really into. He knew that he was at the top at this moment. This was his shining moment. Not that he didn't have all this other success leading up to it, but here he was. This tremendous buildup the last few years from '73 through '76, especially. He had number one hits. He had a lot under his belt. He could command an audience. He could play whatever he wanted to. He was at the top of his game, right. as I've said. So this moment really showcases that. Right. One thing about the Wings perform- about the rock show and the Wings performance is that I think the loud numbers work better than the softer ones overall because I think Wings was a better rock band than they were a, a soft playing band, if you uh, get my drift there. I think yeah. they were great both ways because if yeah. you if you if you watch rock show and listen to Wings Wings Over America, there are certain songs like Bluebird, came out mm-hmm. phenomenal. I thought that really worked well live. I've just seen a face came out great. The acoustic numbers there, their acoustic set. You know, I think those were fine. Yeah, I personally though, I, I'm I'm more partial to the loud numbers because I think they really took hold and and you know and Jimmy and and Danny really you know really got into it uh and and they really kind of everything kind of gelled together with Joe on drums and everything i think everything kind of just they were really on on uh, all four gears on that one okay a few other things i just want to point out and it's funny because i've seen all the tours that i'm so used to hearing paul do let me roll it in mm-hmm. every tour all of a sudden you know it really hit me you know over the head here how much slower he did let me roll it during this tour um, also, uh, speed of sound songs. He did four songs. He did them all at once. And that was it. It wasn't spread out over the show. And that was his new album at the time. Mm-hmm. And I think part of the reason why there's so much Venus and Mars material is probably because when the tour started the end of 75, you know, he, he knew all that material then he hadn't recorded wings at the speed of sound yet. So the band really knew that material, whereas speed of sound was a new album coming into the tour. So he still did four songs from Speed of Sound, but I was surprised that he did all four songs together. Right. Yeah, okay. I, I mean, I, I'm actually surprised Band on the Run wasn't really given the, that kind of treatment and to, you know, to really kind of show, showcase it as much as he did uh, with uh, Venus and Mars. But Well, he did quite a lot from Band on well, the Run. Well, he did, I, but I mean, he, he, didn't, he didn't do the same thing. He didn't group them together like that. Yeah. But... But really and truly, uh, Venus and Mars was the album that they played the most from. Right, which is kind of interesting. And, you know, Band on the Run, Venus and Mars, and Speed of Sound are great albums material-wise to do live. And it's proven in Rock Show and and Wings Over America. Mm -hmm. Also, um, I just wanted to comment about the picture quality. Because for me, there were some low moments. There's a lot of graininess. (laughs) Yeah, you must have seen the same print I did. Um... And yeah, and I'm hoping that's not the case with the uh, DVD, especially the Blu-ray. Although I have, um, ladies and gentlemen, the Rolling Stones, and um, that is very grainy. So we will, you know, we'll see how that how how it goes. Uh, I have the Blu-ray of uh, that Rolling Stones disc, and it's. And, but on the other hand, Charlie is my darling is is wonderful, is beautiful. Hmm. So. We'll see what happens. I, you know, uh, I'm I'm crossing my fingers on that because that was a little disappointing how grainy it was. Well, it was a combination of really clear and grainy at mm-hmm. the same time. So when you saw the graininess, the contrast was greater. <laughs> right. So that made it even more frustrating to watch because there are moments there when they're back to back, a clear picture and then a grainy picture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I've heard that uh, some screenings had really, really excellent. Uh, copies, where other screenings did not. So I don't know. We'll we'll see. Like I said, we'll see when when the DVD comes. Um, you know what it looks like. Well, I'm glad it's finally coming out. And yeah, I am. Like I said, uh, this is one that people have been asking, and this is one that I personally, if I had to list, put on a list of things that I wanted Paul to release, this and Wings Over America would have been two of them, and I'm glad they're both coming out. Um, well, there's no reason when you're the name of Paul McCartney that every single thing you've ever released should be re-released if it's out of print. Right. But 
you know, historically, this was a very important time for him. Right. There so. were, uh, this is a probably, I mean, you could call this a milestone as far as he, he was concerned, and, and I'm glad this milestone is back to where, you know, people can enjoy it. You know, rock show especially. Why it, you know, why it was never on DVD before this is kind of crazy, but I'm glad that's finally out of the way. Yeah, so, so am I. Anyway. So that will put a wrap on this show. If you want to get in touch with us, you can do so in a number of ways. You can email me, Ken Michaels, at my email address, which is everylittlething at att.net. You should also, if you can, check out my website, which is kenmichaelsradio.com. It tells you everything you need to know about my radio program, Every Little Thing, where you can hear it. Um, and you can also listen as a live broadcast to Every Little Thing on 88.7 WNHU in West Haven, Connecticut, which you can stream on WNHU.net Wednesday evenings from 8 to 10. That's Eastern Standard Time. And by the way, as far as my website's concerned, for the month of June, it is Maca Month on my website, which means that every single week I have uh, Beatles Trivia and Beatle Games, and I always have prizes to give away. And the entire month of June... I'm giving away Wings Over America, the remaster, and uh, also your choice of other McCartney prizes with just Paul McCartney trivia. So if you can, check it out, KenMichaelsRadio.com. And if people want to get in touch with you, Steve, what do they have to do? They can email me directly at BeatlesExaminer at gmail.com. I'm also on Facebook under my name. I have pages also uh, for the Beatles Examiner column, uh, and I've also, in the middle of doing a Paul McCartney Tour News 2013 page, that um, I'm that uh, has got an ongoing dialogue about the tour, and you know I'm putting up my stories and also you know talking to people that have been there, and and so you know if you're interested in following on uh, along the tour, we've been we've had some exclusive stories. We had the I had that great story about the re- rehearsal before the tour, and we've got all sorts of things going on and trying to get a really in-depth coverage of every show and, uh, you know, set lists and everything like that. So if you want to if you want to uh, learn all the information about the tour, you know, uh, show up there and, and, and uh, join in. Yeah, and you're doing phenomenal work, Thank Steve. You. And by the way... <laughs> One thing that you brought up in one of your articles was a sound check that Paul was doing, and one of the songs that surprised me, mm-hmm. Big Barn Bed. Yeah, that was um, that was quite a shock. And bring it back, Paul. Bring it well, back. Well, uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> well, it'd be interesting to see if he brings that back. That's uh, that's very that, that uh, everybody reacted to that like, wow, you know. So I don't know what the deal is there. Uh, we'll see. That right. will be that will be fun. And one more thing, if uh, our listeners could, please like us on Facebook. We have our own Facebook page for Things We Said Today. And we also have an email address for the show, Things We Said Today Radio Show at gmail.com. Right. Okay. So, for Things We Said Today, this is Ken Michael saying thanks so much for listening, and I'll see you next time. And this is Steve Marinucci saying thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.